Welcome, everybody. Uh, uh, it is my great pleasure and privilege uh, uh, to open this international webinar on uh, empathy and the uh, aesthetic of language. Um, I'm Vittorio Gallese, I'm a neuroscientist and the director of the lab uh, Neuroscience and the Humanities that in collaboration with the University of Aix-en-Provence uh, and the University of Texas at Austin uh, is uh, hosting uh, uh, this event. Um, I'm particularly glad uh, uh, because of the top-notch quality of the speakers. Empathy is a very complex issue and uh, we are lucky uh, to have the best expert uh, in this field. I don't want to take much time uh, before uh, leaving it to David Roman and Anna Wieczowski, the co-organizers uh, of the webinar. Just a few words about the lab Neuroscience and the Humanities. Uh, it comes from an idea I had together with my colleague uh, Michele Guerra, uh, a film theorist uh, uh, at my university back in the fall of 2019. Uh, and the idea was to create a hub that could uh, foster and promote uh, the dialogue uh, between uh, social cognitive neuroscience and the humanities. Uh, we, uh, I think we live uh, in, uh, in the middle of a paradigm shift. Uh, more and more scholars uh, are, are ready to uh, support uh, what has been defined as biocultural turn. So almost 70 years after uh, CP's no attempt to break the barrier uh, uh, between uh, uh, Naturwissenschaft and Geistwissenschaft uh, with this proposal of a third culture, uh, I think the time has come uh, to promote and foster not only a dialogue between neuroscience and the humanities, uh, but possibly also an empirical collaboration and indeed uh, uh, some of the speakers of today uh, entertain this collaboration since uh, um, a few years. If you're interested to uh, know more about uh, our lab, uh, I point you to our YouTube channel, which bear the same name, uh, um, Neuroscience and the Humanities, and uh, where we upload all the video recordings of the webinar uh, that we organize, like this one. Uh, so stay tuned because in a few days you'll be able uh, to see uh, the webinar online. And we also have a Facebook page, uh, Neuroscience the Humanities, which is daily updated, uh, where we try to bring up to the attention of the audience uh, a variety of interesting articles, both from science and the humanities. But uh, OK, I think I, I talk too much uh, and I'm leaving it now uh, to David Romand, uh, who we owe this uh, webinar. It was his first idea uh, to put together uh, all the people you see today uh, uh, to discuss uh, this fascinating topic. So I'm leaving it to you, David. Thank you, Vittorio. Do you hear me correctly? Okay. Yes. Um, so thank you, Vittorio. Uh, welcome to the participants and the audience. After Vittorio's opening speech, um, I'll be brief and we'll focus mainly on the intentions behind the organization of this international symposium. But first of all, let me uh, thank two people. On the one hand, Nunson and Julie, who is a postdoctoral fellow in Vittorio's lab of social and cognitive neuroscience in Parma. Nunson kindly accepted to ensure the technical management of the webinar and its recording. So thank you very much, Nuncio. On the other hand, I'd like to thank Francesca Ferroni, who is also a postdoctoral fellow in Vittorio's lab. Francesca created quickly the beautiful website of the events on which you can find some information about the participant and their talk. And as Vittorio um, told us, talks will be recorded and that uploaded on the website. So many thanks to, to Francesca too. Now some words about how Vittorio, Hannah and I decided to work together and organize this cross-disciplinary international symposium. I initially offered Vittorio to edit a journal's issue on empathy and the aesthetics of language, the idea being to produce an updated and uh, authentically cross-disciplinary contribution to this topic, a topic that, as you know, has become quite popular in some academic quarters in the last few years. 
Vitoyo reacted very positively to my proposal and we began to call on potential contributors. At the same time, Vittorio submitted the proposal to Hannah in her capacity as a co-editor of the Texas Studies in Literature and Language, TSSL. Hannah, yes, quite an enthusiastically accepted the proposal and two special issues of the TSSL devoted to empathy and the aesthetic of language will be published in 2004 and 2005. Hannah also suggested organizing a symposium on the same topic, bringing together the participants to the special issues. Since there are uh, people from both sides of the Atlantic, organizing a concrete physical meeting would have been too expensive for our respective institution. And so we, we decided to, to organize something uh, virtual, a webinar. At this level, uh, in my name and on behalf of Vittorio and Hannah, I must address special thanks to the speakers with whom we have been in touch for months. The symposium brings together 13 people for four countries, Italy, United States, Germany and France, in order or appearance. Michele Cometta, Renata Gambino, Grazia Pulvierenti, Jana Lutke, Sean Gallagher, Siri Hutzvet, Christian, Christian Werner, Thomas Petraschka, Serge Ugunikov, and Susan Kim. Without forgetting we, the organizers, Vittorio Galese, Hanna uh, Wojciechowski, and David Romo. I um, have also to mention the name of Keith Otley, who will make us the privilege of contributing to one of the TSSL special issue, but who won't be among the speakers today. All participants have shown great enthusiasm for both the publication and the webinar, in spite of their many academic obligations. So thanks again uh, to you um, for being here. Now two remarks regarding the symposium title, Empathy and the Aesthetics of Language. First, I'd like to insist on the meaning of the term empathy. Here the term is not taken in its popular mundane sense. In other words, we don't simply conceive empathy as one's capacity to subjectively care for somebody else or to feel compassion for another individual. Rather, we take empathy in a broader and conceptually richer sense. That is, empathy as one's capacity to subjectively take part in one's own external environment, as one's capacity to construe perceived or imagine elements of the external world as living, thinking, acting entities, as one's capacity to participate in the cognitive, affective, agentive or mental life of other individuals. Here, in other words, we regard empathy as the basic concept of social cognition. As conceived by philosophers, psychologists, neuroscientists, aestheticians, and literature theorists too, empathy is a notoriously polysemous expression. This polysemousness will be exploited by the participants in the symposium. Second, uh, you may wonder why we choose the title Empathy and the Aesthetic of Language, rather than, for instance, Empathy and Literature. The fact is that we thought uh, it was important not to restrict the study, the study of aesthetic empathy in language to the appreciation of literary artwork, but rather to extend the analysis of to the other kinds of other of aesthetic experience. For instance, the rendering of a talk or a play, and to other artistic mediums. This approach is in accordance with the cross-disciplinary stance we endorse. As for the cross-disciplinarity of the symposium, we have the pleasure to bring together theorists of literatures, neuroscientists, philosophers, historians of ideas, and also writers. For about 15, 20 years, there is a growing cross-disciplinarity interest in the study of the relationships between empathy, ethics, and language, notably in the wake of Susan Cain's 2007 seminal monograph, Empathy and the Novel. Here, we'd like to address the issue at stake from a theoretical, empirical, epistemological, and historical points of view. We have, uh, when having a look at the program, you can notice that not a few speakers will deal with empathy and the aesthetics of language at the beginning of the 20th century. This reminds us that the issue is not new and that the reflection on the aesthetic role of empathy in language is as old as the theorization of the concept of empathy of Einfühlung in the early 20th century. And finally, if we my, my last sentence, uh, let me remind you that the idea of this, of the, this symposium as originally put forward by Hannah was to create a space of discussion for the, contribu for the contributors to the two special issue of the Texas studies. 
So I will uh, let Hannah explain that point uh, more in details. Uh, thank you and welcome. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. Sorry. This is Hannah Wojciechowski uh, speaking from the western end of our giant sweep of time zones. I'm in Austin, Texas. Uh, it's early morning. Uh, if you were here, and I really wish you were, I would feed you our delicious breakfast tacos and some really strong coffee. Uh, but wherever you are, uh, I'm glad you're with us. Uh, this is fantastic. So uh, we've got a great group of speakers and we also have a pretty substantial audience here. Audience, thank you. Thank you. Your presence is a gift. And uh, it matters a lot to me and to all of us to get your uh, responses because it will help improve our work when it uh, goes into print. Um, all of you can find these uh, published articles probably in about a year in an issue of Texas Studies in Literature and Language, two issues, and uh, that can be found uh, on Project Muse and eventually on uh, JSTOR. So it will have a wide uh, uh, distribution all over the world. And that's about it. I, uh, I welcome you and thank you for, for being here.